Hello again and welcome to another video from Microchip's Memory Technology Series. This video details the advantages of Super Flash over conventional flash memory. We assume here that you've already watched our video that discusses and compares conventional flash and super flash program, read, and erase operations. If you get confused by this video, just jump out and watch that video again or contact Microchip with your questions. Okay, let's get started. Super Flash advantage number one is erase time. Because Super Flash uses a split gate, the control gate has the ability to block any current flow to the drain independently of the charge on the floating gate. Residue positive charge on the floating gate created by over erase can't cause a leakage path problem because a leakage channel doesn't extend all the way to the drain. However, over erase in conventional flash architectures just can't be allowed to happen because of the leakage paths created. So erase algorithms on conventional flash require a series of short burst erase then check pulses. The result is IC erase times that are several minutes. Now super flash can be erased in milliseconds, even for the full IC as this chart shows. So if you do in-system boot code loading or run various test codes during your build or reflash your final product based on the end market or product features, then Super Flash will save you money by lowering your build times. And in cases where your product is reflashed in the field, let's say for example over the air reprogramming for an Internet of Things application, then there's also a big benefit for Super Flash on power savings. This chart takes that faster erase time result of the last chart and shows those saved seconds in terms of power used for each reflash event. Okay, now super flash advantage number two is thicker oxides while achieving the same erase and programming times and performance. For us IC guys that have watched Moore's Law in action over the last few decades with processes getting ever smaller and smaller, we can attest that the big old geometries of years past were harder to break. Common sense says that thicker oxides improve long-term reliability. And in non-volatile memories, one obvious result is thicker oxides means more program and erase cycles before the oxide ruptures or otherwise wears out. We can see why thicker oxides are possible with super flash first in the erase process. Conventional flash pushes the trapped electrons into the substrate by setting the source, substrate, and drain to a high voltage and grounding the control gate. Pushing the trap electrons into the substrate across this whole gate area takes about 10 megavolts per centimeter. Now as processes have shrunk and useful voltages on silicon have had to come down, this tunneling oxide under the floating gate has needed to become thinner and thinner to support this high megavolt per centimeter number. Programming and erasing repeatedly fills this thin oxide with traps and other wear points under this high stress. Over time, the oxide will rupture or develop so many charge trap sites that it won't be readable. Conventional flash endurance of 10,000 writes only is becoming common. Alternatively, super flash takes advantage of the high electric field around this raised edge. The trapped electrons are bled off over to the control gate instead. This requires only about 4 megavolts per centimeter, less than half of the 10 needed for the stack. So that translates into four times thicker barrier oxide towards the control gate. Also, on programming a super flash bit, because of the split gate design that brings the control gate down over the cell drain edge, a much lower control voltage is used. So again, that translates to a four time thicker bottom channel oxide while getting the same programming speeds. So. If your application needs many programming cycles, combined with many years of retention, then Super Flash is a better choice for you 
independent of what data sheets may report for retention and endurance because of the thicker oxide. Now, super flash advantage number three, a lower programming current. Again, with the direct management of the gate channel using the split gate control, the efficiency of the hot electron programming current is improved. A one microamp channel current in super flash creates the same needed trap charge in about the same time as a one milliamp current creates in conventional flash. This is 1,000 times lower current per cell. It improves the general health of the silicon because there are much smaller currents moving through the supply traces, the layer-to-layer -layer contacts, etc. Now this chart shows the programming currents for microchips super flash versus several competitor specs. Now the chart only shows super flash with a small advantage on current. That's because these specs include charge pumps, input-output circuits, etc. But the advantage to long-term reliability in your system just can't be overstated. Building systems that can take years of hard use and not wear out is every designer's goal. Because of the superior architecture of SuperFlash, one should expect this technology will absolutely fit that need. This chart gives us the most helpful comparison. Sorry it's not the best graphic, but this section here shows the first erase cycle for both a super flash flash sector of memory and a conventional flash sector of memory. The erase time of super flash is two times faster for this sector as we showed in the earlier chart, but at the bottom the same comparison is made on the same ICs after 100,000 erase cycles. Note that Super Flash looks effectively unchanged, but the conventional flash sector is showing signs of wear out. We can speculate that the algorithm that controls the over erase prevention is just now taking much longer to complete due to the growing stress on the oxides in that part.